Welcome back to The Zero Podcast, where we talk about lifting, coaching, and more. You can learn more about Zero by going to www.zero.com.au. That's Zero with a W. We are also proudly sponsored by Establishment Coffee. Head to establishmentcoffee.com.au. Use the code ZERO25 for 25% off and free shipping. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's what all the cool kids say. And if you're on Spotify, hit that five-star review. We love it. Enjoy the show now. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? (laughs) Fine, thanks. Welcome back to the Zero Podcast. Are you nauseous? Me? Yes. Yes. Very. Very. (laughs) What did you do? Do you want a coffee? Uh, (laughs) No, thank you. Like, what exercises did I do? Uh, I did... Squats, split squats, dumbbell RDLs, hamstring curls, leg extensions, and then hit some hanging leg raises. But the the only difference was that you reduced I the reduced the rest times. Same intensity, but yeah. <laughs> normally I'll sit around and have a chat for twenty minutes, sometimes in between I sets. But I had like three minutes rest between sets. I can't believe it made you feel sick. Yeah, yeah I know. That it just shows I haven't been training as Wait, hard well, as you, what I should be. You can't believe that because you've never rested less than 20 minutes between Wait sets. Wait <laughs> In accessories, I've been resting less than three minutes or oh, something. Oh, dude. No way. No way. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm training like a little baby at the moment, so yeah. I don't feel any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been up to? You guys uh, were in uh, Perth? That's this oh. weekend. Oh, this weekend. Wait, yeah. where were you last weekend? Here. The yeah, that's, oh, the that's right. Yeah. 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 yeah How so was I'm, the workshop? I did a workshop with Lily on Sunday. Meg tagged along and put in some input and did some demos for us, which was nice, great. Nice, Meg. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was, a, it was a nice little group. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I like it when it's a little bit smaller of a group. Like I've done workshops with up to 30 people and it can be hard to feel like you're giving everyone enough individual attention and value absolutely Uh, so when it's smaller like that we can really focus on every single person to the same degree uh, which is really nice so that was fun other than that we just kind of hung out nice and what did the workshop involve exactly like how was it structured so we do a bit of an intro a bit of a chat then we go through squat bench deadlift technique (coughs) yep like uh, just go through the rules and get everyone to have a crack and fix their technique individually then we look at like accessories and stability work and piece all, all that together uh, then we just do Q&A at the end and because Lily was a special guest, so it was really focusing on asking her a bunch of questions. Yeah, yeah nice. the Q&A was really good. Yeah, yeah what, was awesome. the, what was the demographic? Was it people that are like fans of Lily or is it powerlifters? Or yeah, was it we, I thought it would be powerlifters, but um, for the most part, like just general strength training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. There I saw the photo of her like wrapping some knees and stuff. Yeah. Like. Oh, well, that Ali, that, that guest, she does powerlift for sure. Yeah. Mm. Um, but some of the girls there that day don't really powerlift. That's cool. Yeah, I think they're all heading in that direction, but they're not like competitive powerlifters right now mm. for the most part. Yeah. And then yeah, a couple were. Cool. That was cool. Yeah, nice. Anything else we did on the weekend? Oh, um, wait. Where'd you just go eat? The, or what you've been up um, to? We ate some Korean. We went to this place called Minari in Southport. That was really good. Yeah, you were telling me about that. That was really, really good. Amazing. Um, and we watched, um, uh, what's it called? The Village. The Village. M9. Oh, yes. I haven't seen that. I've heard mixed reviews about not, it. What was it like? Like a 6.8 out of 10. Oh, Ooh, Tombo? Well, I only watched it as a kid and I thought it was good as a kid. And <laughs> as an adult, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty nice. That sorry. was like James with the Phantom Menace the other weekend. Mm. Yeah, oh, no, no, really? Yeah, that's yeah. that's dog shit. Oh, no. It's not dog shit. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, no, yeah. you just have to watch. So, hang on. I'm a Star Wars fan. Whoa, and it's whoa, whoa. whoa. Pre- it's pretty Let's bad. talk. Okay. Opening scene, Qui Gon, Obi Wan with the smoke, killing the droids. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. And Going Jad, to the hangout with the Gungans, mm. terrible. Awful. But then, like, the battle on the field, pretty good. But no, then the final, ba- the pod yeah. racing, really good. Yeah. Yeah, actually, no, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm and gonna then, gonna then the final battle, like, where, spoiler alert, Qui Gon dies. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do we'll, yeah, we didn't we'll tough it, it out. I know. I've cool. seen it before. I've Me seen too. it. It was my favorite times. Star Wars movie. When you were a child. Yeah. Like, so, controversial opinion. I think that Darth Maul is a better villain than Darth Vader. Oh, 100%. Is I, he the red guy? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't scary. think I can talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have really? To. <laughs> what does Darth Vader do? Walk around slowly, going <laughs> wearing a CPAP. Mm. I can Darth do that for Vader's free at home. We got, we got, we got Darth <laughs> Vader at home. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Darth Vader is definitely a badass, but because of the poor movie <laughs> effects back then, he's not quite as badass as you remember when he goes to fight. He's very. I watch those movies at least once a unruly. year. Wow. So I remember right. them very yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, do you want a badge? Like, a, come on. <laughs> Let's be I real re- here. I remember them very well. Uh, do you know what, though? How many, backfli- how many backflips does Darth Vader do? Oh, that's right. None. <laughs> Have you um oh on that just on movies before we keep talking, uh, I'm ticking off old school movies, mm. Pulp Fiction, done, yep. ten out of ten, uh, Natural Born Killers, Natural Born Killers. I've never. Oh, seen that's it. on my list. So me uh, and Bridget's brother and Bridget watched that in the weekend, and mm. that's fucking, that's another classic. Who's in that? Uh, Woody Harrelson. I and, like him. Um, what's her name? I'm looking it up. Juliet mm. Lewis. Is it Juliet Lewis? Yeah. That's the, a gap, ol- gap in the teeth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't Florida? know. Florida? Yes. It's an Oliver yes. Stone uh, production. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is Oliver Stone? The origin, it was originally, <laughs> the story was written originally by um, Quentin Tarantino, but apparently Oliver Stone changed so much of it that Tarantino kind of disowned it. Really? Oh, so yeah. was this the one that we were debating whether it was his 10th movie or not last week? Possibly. Dude, the way it's filmed and... It's like an mm, acid trip. Yeah, it's fucking... It's literally just a full-blown acid mm. trip. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> we watched The Sixth Sense the week before, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you think? That was good. It's great. I wasn't it? I wasn't you, expecting yeah, it. Yeah, you, like, you didn't see it coming. <gasps> wow. I did That's not so see it cool. coming because I am oblivious. <laughs> that was, yeah, one of my favourite movies as a kid. Terrified me. Mm. So what, good. What have you been up to, Bridget? Uh, what have I been up to? Saturday, yeah, we just had a movie day at home because it was raining. And then Sunday, I um, went and handled Heather at the ICN State Championships. And that was, it was so much fun. It's completely changed my mind about bodybuilding. I just Mm. thought it was incredible. Heather had a great day. It was her best competition to date. She placed second in the biggest 40 plus bikini lineup that ICN Queensland had ever had, which was amazing. And then she got third in the 40 plus swimsuit and 40 plus sports model. She was so happy. Mm. Yeah, it was unreal. Yeah, so much fun. What did it change your, wait, hang on a second. What am I trying to say? How did it change my perception of it? You've been to comps before. Just the one. So I handled Heather or James and I handled Heather at one. (laughs) Do you call it handling? I I don't know. That was going to be my question after all of this. Like what is handling? (laughs) But um, like, obviously I had a lot less experience with, with bodybuilding back then. So you don't really know what to say. You're in the crowd and, and you don't really know what to yell out to sort of encourage them. We didn't know if we were even allowed to yell in the mm. crowd, but apparently you are. Get tight. Yeah, but that's what they were saying. Was, get tight, get tight. But I'm like, Push big shoulders, box. come on, like you know, <laughs> pop the lats and this and that. But um, but there wasn't a lot of at the first one I went to. There wasn't a lot of sort of camaraderie between people. Everyone was you know looking at each other as a competitor. But this time I saw um, yeah, just a lot more support between the competitors and it was just yeah really good vibe and everyone was really happy so nice yeah i loved it really cool very cool Mm. and congratulations heather you were incredible congrats heather one of the hardest workers in the gym Mm. yeah yep all paid (laughs) off and then she's got another comp with mba coming up next weekend Oh, yeah. plays basketball yeah (laughs) (laughs) natural bodybuilding australia for those wondering yeah right (laughs) do they know that there's like another really big organization (laughs) with the same (laughs) issues (laughs) No. <laughs> what about you, James? What are you been up to? Um, nothing. I was sick as a dog. Uh, Thursday, Friday, just had the flu. Um, seems like everyone had the flu, by the way. Yeah, yeah. everyone's mm. been sick. And then, um, yeah, had what I do on the weekend. Trained Saturday morning. Absolutely flogged myself. Went and did like a, I guess you could say, this gym. They all kind of train. They do high rocks and mm. things like that. Yeah. Okay. So you could imagine what the workout was like. Mm. And I'm not that uh, conditioned to that style of training. Mm. But it was fun just to, you know, it's like, fuck, all right. It's a 40-minute time cap. I just got to survive and go as hard as I can to make the most of this you thought it was going to be a strength session, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, yes, yeah, so I just went and got, yeah, absolutely reamed. It was like probably like we probably did like four kilometers worth of running, uh, 180 burpees, 180 oh. like push-ups, 180 cows on the rower twice, no. on the Ooh. ski erg twice. No. Um, and then uh, there was more 180. Did I say burpees? Yeah, yeah. and then what else is it? Were there like 180 thrusters? 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you go on partners. With and what? Do you choose away or is it fixed? You start at 20 with 20s and then drop down to 12.5s because that gets a. Uh, and you know, with my. Uh, my leg training is a very uh, here and there, so <laughs> you could imagine the doms. Like it felt like I just trained for the first time, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was so much fun. Like you know, forty minutes, get a sweat up, slap hands, go get a coffee after. So it was really cool. And then uh, yeah, me and Bridget just went and got some bagels. And he was complaining about his glutes for the rest of the day. Yeah. <laughs> How do these people train like this every week? I don't know. All the time. I guess like anything, you just get conditioned to it. Are you sure mm. though? Yeah, because then you speak to them and some of them were like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I train at a powerlifting gym. Do you do power? Nah, I used to. And then they'd be like, oh, what have you squatted? I'm like, I've squatted 240. And like, fuck that, putting 240 on your back. I'm like, yeah. bro, what you, <laughs> what you <laughs> do is so just much. as fuck that as what <laughs> I you would reckon? do. Yeah. I, I always wondered if, there were, if sports like that kind of facilitated the whole like all or nothing like go mm. so 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 hard and then the rest of the day you just kind of veg out and eat whatever yeah well the, so it's funny the name of the workout on saturdays is called gao which is go all out yeah okay so you mean to just kind of go balls to the wall mm. uh, just to like wrap up the weekend i guess mm. but yeah it was really fun and then uh what do we do sunday what do i do sunday oh i just did errands ran some errands hung out with poots um because bridget's normally doing everything so it's good for her to do nothing on Sunday. Nice. Mm. Mm. All right. That's good. What are we grateful for, Bridget? Uh, I am grateful for video calls. Mm. I had a video call with my whole family, like a group video call yesterday. It's always really nice to see their faces, even though they're all so far away. So, yeah, I'm grateful for that. Living nice. in the future. I remember as a kid when you'd see yeah. it on The Simpsons, <laughs> when they do the future episodes and a video call would come up. <laughs> like, that's so cool. Now we have it. Yeah. Um, I'll go two things. First thing, grateful for Bridget. Ah, oh, thank you. Mm, very grateful for Bridget. Because uh, sm- you, you had to do the grocery shopping on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just so much things that like, uh, she's just so responsible. It's, uh, it's so good. I love it. So very grateful. Uh, and the second thing is, this. Uh, I'm just very grateful for my general ability and fitness. And our strength and health. I just realized that after that session, I was like, oh, that was fucked. I suck at that. I'm like, no, I can kind of go and do anything. And I'm very grateful for that because a lot of people can't. Yeah. Uh, not like in a fuck way, but it's like, sweet. I can go, like in Bali, I just trained, did whatever my mates were doing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then like if they wanted to lift weights, it's like, oh, cool, I'm better at this. But if they wanted to do this kind of conditioning session or let's go jump on a bike for 45, I could just kind of do anything. Mm. And it feels kind of good. Adaptable. Mm. Having nice. a good... uh. I guess base level of fitness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Meg, what you got? I had a, a deep and meaningful one, but I forgot. So my other, my backup <laughs> one, my backup one is Poods because he's Aww. literally the most sweetest thing in the world. Um, but he also teaches me perseverance because I really want him to like me. He does. <laughs> yeah, but your he auntie Meg like now he loves <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. So every day I'm just like, just try and get him to love me a little more. <laughs> Fuck, he's been. He does. He's been doing my head in. Why? A little shit. Oh, he's getting a him. bit he's getting a bit demanding in his old age, but he's really? allowed mm. he's allowed yeah. to. I think he is allowed to. Mm. And he's getting real fussy with his food. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mr. Life, Poots. Life's Sorry, tough. I just dis- I disturbed him. <laughs> down. Down. Have I ever said I'm grateful for your mum? Yes. Oh. Probably like two or three times actually. Okay, well, I better skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it again. I think I've said video calls before. <clears throat> no, I gotta come up come up so, with something uh, more unique than that. No, you can say that. You, that's a good one. Uh, I, I'm grateful for I'm grateful for coaching. I think we learn a lot about uh, ourselves when we're coaching other people, um, and I think there's valuable lessons that you can take away from it if you look at it more than just a job or a means to an end. Uh, so I'm I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity that. to. To be interrupted, so. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I, was, I was finishing up. What's yours? I'm so sorry. I just remembered mine. I'm very grateful for being able to learn in different ways. For example, Lily's workshop, Lily and Thomas's workshop on the weekend. I pick, I took away a lot. And I mean, it's just like condensed down into one day. It's not like doing a semester at uni, but I always struggled in school because I didn't like to learn that way. I learn best when I'm learning from people. And I'm glad that I can do that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice, Meg. All right, before we get into some quotes, I just want to drop you, uh, give you some facts. So today is, it's actually International Coffee Day. 
Yeah. Really? Did you guys know that? No. And <laughs> on the <laughs> head. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> you didn't know it. It's on Google. Like, no, 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 no. It's no, not no. here. There's he, more. There's more. He found this out because. So, establishment. If you want a coffee, go get one for free. Ah. Oh, so they free do. coffee yeah. today. Today yeah, only? Yeah, one per person. But like, this mm. podcast is not going to come out. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, but today is also Orange Shirt Day. Oh. Mm. Ah. Don't know why. Whoops. It's also National Love People Day. Mm. Ah. It is also National Hot Mold Cider Day. Hot Mold, mold. Cider. Love and Hot Mold Cider. National cider. Mud Pack Day national. and National Chewing Gum Day. Nice. Yeah. I'm not a fan of national days, I've got to be honest. <laughs> you know what I'm excited for? King's birthday. <laughs> When's yeah, that? It's a public when holiday Monday. on it's Monday. It's a public holiday. Is it on, so on Monday? It's I don't even weekend know the king and the bro's giving me a public holiday. This, this Monday? Yeah, this yeah. weekend's a long weekend. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Sweet. <laughs> Shout out the king. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I like the thought experiment uh, like on your video call point before, Bridget, of... How would you describe the way that you live to someone from 10,000 years ago? Yeah. Like how would, how would you describe the fact that you get in a metal object and f- drive down the road faster than any animal or anything they've ever mm. seen moving before, just chilling out with like a burrito in one hand and your phone in the other hand, steering <laughs> with your knees. Yeah. <laughs> I go to the drive through What's a drive through I plug my phone in. What's a phone? Yeah. But to aliens, we would just still look like Flintstones. So I just give them, like, blah, blah, blah. yeah, like just like running around. I give them <laughs> these pieces of paper, and then they give me stuff in return. It's called money. It's like, what's money? Mm. Mm. You know, cowrie shells weren't even in use back then. Yeah, wow. I still like cowrie shells. Like as currency. Yeah. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I I'm, you, I know, I'm I happy know to pay you, you in cowrie shells if you want. I, know <laughs> I thought you, you meant as a phone. I was like, what? <laughs> If I said yes, do you reckon you could get enough carry shells to pay me before my next paycheck? Is it carry shells? That was yeah. the original yeah. form conch of shell, shell I'm thinking of then for you're the thinking phone. Of you're thinking of a conch. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Magic <laughs> conch. <laughs> but it is carry shells. I'm as, pretty sure. As the as original currency. form I'm, of currency. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there you go. All right. Quotes. What do we got? The greatness of a man is measured by the way he treats the little man. Compassion for the weakest is a sign. Fuck me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me start again. I know I was on a roll too. The greatness of a man is measured by the way he treats the little man. Compassion for the weak is a sign of greatness. Yes, it is. <coughs> Zero weakness. <laughs> Mine is people have a lot to say about lives they've never lived. Oof. Mm, facts. <laughs> when you get an oof, you know it's a. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, felt, I felt that yeah. one. <laughs> what you got? Uh, it's very long. I might cut it short. What you eat rewires your brain. Goals you set rewires your brain. Skills you learn rewires your brain. Books you read rewires your brain. Habits you build rewires your brain. And there's a whole bunch more. Um, people you interact with rewires your brain. Wait, the way you talk to yourself rewires your brain. Emotions you experience rewires your brain. Nice. Nice. Very long. Are they also rewires. Yeah. Like grammars. Instead of rewire, rewire. I thought that. Unfortunate. But I thought I thought twice. Like maybe I'm wrong, but I think no. it's meant to be rewire. You're definitely mm-hmm. right. Okay. You've got great grammar. You shouldn't doubt yourself on stuff like that. Thank you. Is the cheese gonna rewire your brain, Tom? Bro? The cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the ketones already. <laughs> <laughs> Powering me. He was talking about buying this like thing that you can test if you're in ketosis. I was joking. Oh yeah, no, I said, get me keto sticks. Yeah, but are they legit? I've wanted to buy them all the heaps. Yeah, to see if it's like a yeah. You piss on them if they go purple. You're in ketosis. I feel like I kind of know when I am there because like you kind of feel fluey. You kind of feel a little bit groggy. That's you what should, being in ketosis feels like. You should. No, mm. It shouldn't feel like that. Oh. <laughs> That's just James being generally malnourished. <laughs> <laughs> from his eating disorders. I was going to say, I, that sounds horrible. Why would you anyone want to do that? You should get like a permanent metallic t- taste in your mouth. That's <gasps> really? a good sign. Yeah, and your Damn. breath breath should smell like metal. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Um, my, my quote is actually a self-quote that's derived from a longer thing, which is the dash matters. I was watching this thing the other day about like... Uh, when you look at a gravestone, you see this, the the year they're born and then the year after and this tiny little dash between them represents someone's entire life. Wow. And that, you know, yeah, wow, deep. 
It mm. is. And that like, yeah, so the dash matters. What you do is such a small blip in time. Uh, and it's just crazy that, you know, everything we do is going to be forgotten. Very soon after we die, who we are is going to be forgotten. If we have kids and they have kids and they have kids, the third round is probably not even going to know our name or who we were or what we did. Uh, and so everything just gets condensed up into this little dash. That's it. Are we meant to feel inspired by that? Yeah, you're meant to feel whatever you want to feel. <laughs> mm. Makes you think about it a little bit though. Yeah, mm. it does. It does. Don't waste the dash. Mm. Or, or waste it because then it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, I mean, life. One, one way of looking at it. <laughs> you have to give life meaning. Ooh. There is no meaning to life. You give it meaning. Oh, that's very uh, Brian Cox of you. Mm. <laughs> it's true. I was just about to say on the cosmic scale or even a smaller blip in time. Well, when you do look it, at it. He, he has a whole piece of on that, though, about yeah. life not having meaning. And it's that's the beautiful thing is that yeah. we get to create it. Absolutely. Mm. Well, if you look at it on a cellular level, it's very... <laughs> Yes. You were enjoying yes, that documentary that we watched. Was, it. What was, was it? Was the, it the, the mitochondria <laughs> is the powerhouse of the cell? <laughs> <laughs> we were watching a documentary called The Cosmic Scale the other day, and James was really into it. You know what's funny on one. the podcast? If you guys don't laugh, I just look at CJ. It's like I, I'm just wanting <laughs> CJ to react. Yeah, <laughs> you got to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. So the first, I got a few topics here, but the first one we've been meaning to get to for a while. Um. How would I... Can you tr kind of frame that into a question? To be honest, I'm sorry if I misinterpret this question. So this is from Natasha Lindsay. So um, she's saying that uh, she wants to hear from the women at Zero who understand and have lived the weight fluctuations, the hormone fluctuations, and they're trying to stay soft and feminine in a very strong masculine environment. So I think she just wants to know how we do that. This is something that I've battled with for a while I think all women do as well there's some days where I come into the gym and I want to be the most jack person in the room and then there's other days where I'm out with my friends and I put on a dress and I feel like a man in a dress and I wish I was more soft and more feminine so I wish I had a straight answer but it's just all about being comfortable in your own skin can yeah, you think, think of any practical steps or anything you've been through in your own head that have that contributes to you being more comfortable in your own skin? Um, actually, James has been a big help. He's helped me to be more confident with the way I look and who I am. And for example, like when we were going to Bali and I put that dress on for the wedding and I hated it and I said, no, I look too you mannish. You hated that dress? When I first put it on, I did. I'm like, I look too mannish. And he convinced me that I didn't. And then when I actually saw videos and photos of myself in it, I'm like, I actually don't look the way I think I do in my head. So it all comes down to body dysmorphia, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you helped with James's? I <laughs> hope so. I hope so. I always, I always tell him how great he looks, but I don't know if he believes me. <laughs> a bit of morphin sometimes. <laughs> we all have it. What it's about a constant battle? What about for you, Meg? I, um, I, I, I think that no matter what, there's going to be some influence from the outside world and the space that all of us are in. It seems like our whole world, but not many people get exposed to this kind of world, which mm -hmm. is that there's like expectations to be womanly and curvy, but also jacked and strong. Yeah. It's very conflicting. And we're actually a small percentage of what makes up, I guess, other beauty ideals. Mm. Um, so yeah, as, as prevalent as it seems, I think that we're exposed to all of this. It's on our phone. It's with the conversations that we have and the people we hang out with. So it becomes more real, but how we define femininity still comes down to how you define it so even if your friends what you consume tell you that being muscular is not feminine you get to decide if that actually means it's not feminine absolutely um, and it takes a lot of work to undo that when there are people around you or influences that kind of make you think that that's how we think but that's what it that's what it takes it requires intentional work to unbind that mm -hmm. just like how it takes intentional work to get stronger you can't just hope and wish that you'll wake up and not think that being muscular is not feminine. You kind of have to will it to be a different belief. Well, kind of, it kind of raises the question of like, what is masculinity and what is femininity? Because mm. if it's just an adjective, then you can say looking a particular way is not this thing, but it's mm. not an adjective. It's not a describing word, right? Mm -mm. 
Like, and there's, there's always going to be people out there that say you're too this or you're too that, no matter how you look. So like Meg said, it's all just a matter of your own perception. Yeah, it's very fluid because not not all of us are probably have, have different ideas of what masculinity is. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Like uh, I've, I'm obviously, this question isn't for me, but like with the dress thing, like Bridget's back to me, like she's like, my back looks too muscular, I look too big. And my first thought is like, don't you want to show that off? Like that's like... To me, anyway, like, it's like, whenever I see someone, like, fit and healthy, I just think, oh, man, like, in my head, I'm like, great job. They look sick. Yeah. They deserve to look like that. Mm. If, do you know what I mean? It's like, they definitely worked hard for it. They they ticked a lot, a lot of boxes to get there. So, I don't know. I think it looks good. When I think but that's, like, just, that doesn't really mean anything. Of course it does. Mm. When I think of Natasha's question, though, and it's, like, about being in the gym specifically, I think what would give me solace is knowing that... <laughs> Everybody is experiencing this to some level. It might not be about being masculine versus feminine for each individual, but I mean, take other men, for example, um, in Australia or in the fitness space, 20 to 35 year old men, their biggest issue when it comes to body dysmorphia or body image is that they're not muscly enough. But I know Bridget and I probably don't define masculine as muscle mass we probably absolutely. see it as personality absolutely. traits absolutely right 100%. So everyone is battling this mm -hmm. and she's not you're not the only one who's battling it we all are it just might not appear it on the surface yeah mm. in different ways well said meg yeah i mean i disagree as in masculinity <laughs> is a hundred percent defined by your <laughs> level of musculature and it's never going to be enough mm. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be forever small no 100 100 agree with what you're saying what what do you think of the comment then that the gym is inherently masculine mm. what are your thoughts around that i mean i guess men popularized it just like how barbershops were popularized by mm -hmm. men it's kind of hard to undo history um but we're seeing a lot more women in this yeah, environment now but which it's is different amazing. nowadays yeah it's very different yeah it's so much more celebrated you just have to look for it and focus on that so yeah. do you do you both then disagree with that? Not disagree with that, but have a, a different belief. Do you believe that the gym is not a masculine environment? Because my, my belief, like I, I see it as gender neutral. It's just a gym. Mm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a wall, a set of walls and equipment with a defined purpose. But of course, I'm very logical. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as a masculine environment. Maybe five years ago, I would have. At commercial gyms, but zero specifically. No, like you said, it's very gender neutral, very welcoming. Mm. I will jump in as well as and say that um, obviously it's going to be a little bit different for me because I've never been on the receiving end of, uh, I guess, gender stereotypes in the gym and fitness world because I'm not female. I think the the receiving end of stereotypes is far worse for females than for males. Mm. Mm. You do see a lot of reels um, about women still very intimidated to go into the free weight section because it's dominated by men. So women do still tend to hide in their little corner and grab their weight and stay over there out of the way. But I feel like zero is very different. Yeah. Very, very different if we're talking about zero specifically. I actually, yeah, no, now that I think about it a bit more, I can see where this kind of thing continually gets perpetuated because we see, we see reels damning women for what they wear mm. into the gym. Like, why does it matter? Yeah, no mm. one's uh, no one's in a man's comments making yeah, fun of him for wearing like, a stringer. Why did you wear this? You know? Well, sometimes yeah, they are. But sometimes, <laughs> but very rarely in comparison to women. Mm. Um, so I actually do understand that point of view for sure. Mm. But it's just another thing. If tomorrow the internet didn't exist and we didn't see all those things, all you'd have in front of you is your gym. Yeah. Um, and our gym's pretty cool. The gym outfits one pisses me off, eh? Like... You know, when people get upset about someone wearing yeah. something to, like, there's been times I'll see someone, you know, maybe it might be girls talking about another girl, oh, look what she's wearing, and I'm like, she's wearing the exact same thing as you, but That's just right. looks better, or yeah. maybe you're, like, no, 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 but do you know what I mean? Like, you're, they're the your ones judgment that are, they're is... They're the ones that are sexualizing so, yeah, her. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're mm. sexualizing how she looks because she's got curves, or she's, mm. you know, she's got long hair the ta i don't know i agree am with I, that. I know so what you're trying to say yeah and i'm like exactly the fuck she looks say. exactly the same as you what do you mean like she's yeah. wearing the same thing you just mm. look like dog shit um <laughs> i no <laughs> okay. i'm just being i always about, hated yeah. that in powerlifting when mm. people get uh, upset at women for like getting their nails done or getting their hair done or like you know paying attention to their appearance 
for a powerlifting competition and then people get upset about that? Mm. Like, shut the fuck up. No, this is something yeah. they've worked towards all year. I Why think about the co- color coordination of my power. Like, I'm thinking about the color coordination of my next powerlifting outfit now mm. and I'm on keto <laughs> for the purpose of being confident <laughs> enough to take my shirt off of my final deadlift. What it comes down to is all of these hate comments just come from a place of insecurity. It's never anything about you personally. If you're mm. being attacked, it's mm. it's something wrong with that it's person. It's so true. It's, mm. it's ten, 10 out of 10 times a reflection of themselves. Like, do you guys get upset if someone comments on your outfit or something like you that? You mean in person? Yeah, or well, in general. Like a, a mean comment? Yeah, or? in general. Um, uh, maybe I would have back mm. in the day. I feel like I've, I've matured a lot since then. Yeah. I'd try not to. I'd like to think I wouldn't let it get to me, but mm. it probably would. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I just feel a little bit like I, I, I can't have a proper conversation with someone whose confirm- confirmation bias is... Like they're just not willing to hear what I have to say mm. anyway, so I'm just kind of yeah. like, oh, I can't be bothered. They're yeah. not actually going to listen to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, it's just funny. I always get a uh, like little silly comments on like people I know that will mystery me, like laughing at my sunglasses. Like I'm like, really? We we are from two completely different worlds. Do you know what I mean? Like, because in my head, I dress a thousand times better than you, but you think these are hilarious. But I you swear, wear oh. them for yourself. You're yeah, not that's, it, that's what I mean. I bought them because I enjoy them. Like, yeah. You don't have to enjoy them. I enjoy them. Mm. That's why I bought them. That's why I wear shoes or that's why Tombro wears shoes. And it's, we bought them because we like them, mm. not for someone else's enjoyment. Mm. Um, but I, I think that you asking the question, Ta- Natasha, is good because it's something that you're reflecting on and wondering why maybe it hits a sore spot or it's something, you know, that you're trying to navigate. So it's good to ask yourself those questions and also ask other people um, that you trust for their two cents too. Not necessarily to change your mind. We're not here to change your mind, but maybe just to hear our two cents. Mm. So, I mean, coming back to the question then, how how can people find that balance between, again, wanting to be an animal and be jacked and wanting to feel soft and feminine as well. Do you think <coughs> it's it's less it's obviously it's nothing to do with appearance. It's a frame yeah. of mind. It's what, really redefining what can people do to work towards redefining it? Um I I think it's what Bridget said earlier about how James has made a big impact. It's not James isn't the answer, but it's what you surround yourself with. Absolutely. What you consume, who you hang out with, what you listen to, who you talk to. It sounds like a cliche, but that's definitely a big, big part. And you have you have complete control over who mm. you expose yourself to or who you listen to. Yeah. And your definition of what's feminine and what's masculine is going to change. Like for me, what I thought was feminine 10 years ago is very different to what I find feminine now. Yeah, me too. And it's just a matter of just learning to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. It's like uh, they're just circling back to the, the sunglass things are really shitty – if I wore them around my group of friends, they're just a normal pair of sunnies. Mm. If I wore them around, you're talking about like the little white ones. Yeah, no, I thought you were talking I mean? about like the no, no. these ones. No, that were like reflective. I, oh, no, they're tr- they're running glasses. But you know, <laughs> if I wore them to a powerlifting gym, people would be like, "Whoa, what the fuck are they?" And it's like, fair enough. Like, no, but you stand out. You, why, no, but, would, why would you want to? No, but you know what I mean. It's different. It's, yeah. it's like a powerlifter wearing a soft suit to a commercial gym. People are like, "What the fuck, oh, bro? You do you. not need to wear that." It's like, yeah, I know, but like, I'm from a different world. I'm mm. doing something different to you. No, it comes back to what I said on the podcast the other week people are going to judge you no matter what so do what makes you happy mm. you get one life yeah wear the soft suit with white glasses that's it <laughs> wait can the soft suit be white <laughs> <laughs> no that's a no no that's okay, a no no okay. okay so there are there are some hard lines and yeah. don't do whatever you want yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do do some things you want but be prepared to be judged <laughs> that's that's a strong no way eh? the white soft suit i'm happy to write a rule in the rule book <laughs> no white soft suits ever <laughs> I've, I don't it's think a big I've, risk. It's the only time Very I've uh, who's pulled off a white soft suit. I'm going to say uh, Michelle Latham has. Yeah, she's worn she's worn a white mm. one. She yeah. looked normal. Like you don't be think what the fuck white soft suit. But everyone else doesn't, has worn one. Um, doesn't Russell or he wear white soft suits as well? Yeah, he looks ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's more just the case of like it's inherently going to work better on a female than a male. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Russell he just looked ridiculous. <laughs> Oh man! All right, just on that as well. What are the, some other challenges and misconceptions women face in strength sports? Misconceptions and what was the other word? Challenges. Challenges in strength sports. Mm. Um, I I see this one a lot. 
I don't know if I can relate to it, but I see this one quite often. Um, female coaches maybe not getting the credit they deserve just because they're a female. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. I hear that a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. I hate it. Yeah. Absolutely hate it because it, it's it, it's literally born of like the troglodyte ages. Mm. which is like you can't have valuable information because you're not as strong as me mm. Mm. how can you give me and i i hate it so much because it's like well, i coach coops he benches 300 i only bench 200 like yeah. he, he lifts way more than me i coach colton he squats and deadlifts way over 400 so does theo so does joseph they all trust me what what is so special about me that these strong people can trust me that a female can't have the same set of skills there's no reason why that mm. should exist but it it still exists. It's just like a one of the plagues of our industry. It's pretty sad. I remember Bridget one time, someone came home and asked you something. Can you remember this? And I said the exact same thing, just worded differently. Yeah. And you were like, I literally just said that. I was yeah. like, I know. I said it. They completely ignored what I said and then asked the same question to James and he repeated the same thing <laughs> back and they listened to him. Oh, mm. yeah. I think... Um, it wasn't me, was it? No. <laughs> Just checking. I think incontinence in women is still, for some reason, looked down upon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's a, like, I think it's good that people are willing to comment that sort of stuff publicly because it's like, cool, you're weeding yourself out as one of the dumbest people yeah, on the planet. True. Thank you. That's it. Thank okay. you for identifying how stupid you are publicly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, did you guys see the, the post Eugene Tio made? No. Nah. No, I don't think so. He made a post about it and they were just like the biggest idiots on that post. Yeah. What kind of stuff were they saying? Mm, that they were peeing uh, for attention or not. Um, oh my gosh, I can't. Just stupid, stupid things. Think I about, just have to close those mindset. comment sections. It just infuriates yeah. me. I don't even bother reading it. You can't argue mm. with someone like that. No. You know what no. I'm going to do? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to piss myself for attention. That's... <laughs> Fucking <laughs> absolutely insane that someone can arrive at that conclusion. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's it. You just can't argue with stupid. You can't argue with stupid at some point, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll always beat you with experience. Mm. Mm. Um, um, I have. I thought of one last one. Sometimes a little bit of uh, is the word disrespect on the gym floor, um, like uh, ownership over equipment or plates, or like wanting to work in with people, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I used to experience that in a commercial gym setting. That's the last one I can think of. Yeah. Or you also see a lot of, um, you know, women when they post celebrating like a new PB or something like that, you'll see a lot of comments of men going, oh, that's easy. I was benching that when I was 12. And it's like, well, I hope mm. you were because you've got a lot more testosterone yeah. than I do. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. you one. hear that one a lot. I've seen this happen at a comp as well. People are like, oh, man, she's such a bitch. Uh, and I'm like, why? Because she's carrying herself like a fucking... Yeah, that's it. She's just acting exactly the same way as this man is here, but mm. you're looking at him in a respectful way and you're looking down at her, mm. calling her a mm. bitch. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, she's just coaching. She's literally just locked in mm-hmm. like you are. That's it. Except you're just degrading her because she's a female. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah, you can't win sometimes. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> I just got so mad. I just remembered, I just remembered <laughs> women get periods. <laughs> Have you guys seen those reels? Yeah, it'll be saying brackets like I'm yeah, six, six three. foot five, <laughs> six foot three. Didn't realize I was, I was being filmed. I love like, this so funny. Uh, I just thought that was the perfect time. To, it was. Mm. It was. Um, I'm glad you're taking it seriously. <laughs> no, I am. I just, uh, yeah. Um, um, I got a few. Do you guys want to touch on anything else? Yeah, I've only got about fifteen minutes left, mm. so. Do you guys think as well, you guys feel really confident here because you guys are like been here for a long time? Or the you guys community are, here is incredible. Yeah, okay. Mm. I feel like yeah, Zero's got a good community for that. Yeah. Um, Meg's, Meg's confident in every gym though. That is just not true. Yes, you are. Uh-huh. You're, you tolerate, like when we go to say in America, you're way more comfortable in those gyms than I am. No, I'm not. I just fake it till I make it. Except for that <laughs> time that I had to save you a combo off those little kids. <laughs> Where was that? Had to go staunch some little kids. Yes. Oh, do you mean at um, Destination Destination Dallas? Dallas. Yeah. I'm not confident. I just pretend because that's that's just going to help get me to being confident (laughs) than not. (laughs) For the record, I didn't staunch anyone. I moved their bag off the bench Uh, and then they came up to Meg and they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) That's totally fine. (laughs) I'm confident in other gyms now, but it's because of my experience at Zero. 
mm. that's given me that confidence. I'm confident mm. in palacing gyms, but I'm still pretty timid in commercial gyms. Yeah, but everyone's scared in a commercial gym. They're more scared of you than you are of them. That's how you, you've got to think of it. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, because there's always, nah. There's, <laughs> there's always the people that are like, you know, they're the people. So they walk in, like, hey, bro, and like walk around to every single person and know everyone because it's And that's like, what you do here. Yeah, because it's literally my gym. <laughs> Those people are like, it's their gym, and it's like, what? Oh, I'm in someone else's gym. I don't like it. Mm. Maybe this is a uniquely me problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, I walk around this gym being like, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I have more like seven, just because just I have gaps. Yeah, sweet. That's She's going to be late. Don't say that. <laughs> She's not going to listen. Don't say that. She'll be too late to listen. <laughs> Thomas. She a thousand percent will be late though. Wait, is this something we have to cut out? I, no, I don't think so. Yeah, but it's like, part can, of the like, family. Can, can you not? Mm. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, we're not going to do this this week, but I want to do a Technic deep dive on a lift or something every single week. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Cool. I mean, it's going to oh. be three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone know anything else? <laughs> no. Yeah, SPD. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so no, that's a great idea. I'm keen. Mm. Um, oh, I've got some really cool topics. Let's do them next time. We should do RDL for one mm. of the first ones. I think like mm. maybe 75% of people don't actually feel them how, like, or how feel they're like supposed they're, to feel, feel, them. feel like they don't, they're not doing it right. Sweet. That's a good mm. one. Let's, Let's do just that. do it now. How much time we got? Seven minutes. Yep. Do we All have right. a quiz? <laughs> nah. Damn. <laughs> All right. My quiz is how do you do an RDL how would you define in words the difference between an RDL and a stiff leg? Uh, RDL has softer knees. Yeah. Mm, Romanian knees, uh, as some would say. <laughs> <laughs> Mo moving through the transverse plane. <laughs> trying, trying to teach an RDL to someone who's never done one before is always a bit of a challenge. Mm. Yeah. What I like to, if they can't sort of get it right, I like to tell them, imagine you've got either a rope around your waist or like chains connected to your hips and imagine someone pulling those chains back, keeping your knees soft. Rope burn. <laughs> keeping your upper back tight. But yeah, it's a difficult one to teach, but, but it's, again, always, it's always interesting. Saying things like keeping your upper back tight, that's terminology that like our clientele or powerlifters would understand. Yeah, tr yeah, yeah, true. So there's mm. lots of uh, moving pieces and things you need to mm -hmm. think about. Like it's a very simple, I try to think of it, Tom, I remember when I first started coaching and I'd always try to use big words and you're like, don't use big words. You sound like, and I'm like, nah, you sound smarter. And I'm like, nah, you sound way dumber when you try to use big words. <laughs> yeah, you just got to simplify yeah, it I'm as like, much Keep as your possible. shins vertical. Keep your knees kind of soft. Keep your back straight. Push your hips back. So do you agree with the shins vertical thing? Yeah, okay. definitely. The shins vertical, but knees are going soft. So you're pushing your hips back? Hips back more, but <clears throat> have, there has to be some give. So you have to sit into it a bit more because otherwise you're just going to feel like you're going to topple over with the soft knees so your knees will travel forward a bit no you'll you'll sit down you can sit down without your knees traveling forward mm -hmm. okay yeah and then stiff leg is it literally keeping your knees locked out no you're not going to feel your hamstrings if they're completely locked out well <sighs> oh, you're sorry you're not gonna it's not gonna feel great because i had a uh, stiff leg did lift you're not so much sitting back you're more so hinging forward yeah Oh, I've never thought of it that way. I mm. still think of it as hinging back, but um, just with a, a much more locked out knee. Because to me, a stiff leg deadlift is it comes to a complete stop because it's a... You go into the floor. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Mm. When you say hinging back, I think what you're probably meaning is like shifting your weight back mm. yeah. rather than yeah, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. fully hinging back. Sorry. Because I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like I can see it in my head. Mm -hmm. Um. And because I'm training training this uh, client at the moment, Delia, who is completely new to weight training, she when we when she w walked in the door for the first time like a month ago, she'd never done even a body weight squat. So teaching her RDL was so 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 rewarding. But um, is she the lovely girl with the tattoos? Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Nice. sweet. She's she really sweet. she's gone from like RDLing the dowel. To RDL, RDLing like 15 aside or That's something. That's amazing. That's huge. It's, it's amazing. Wow. Um, but teaching her was, yes, using not even tight upper back, like lots of di different language. Like it's going to feel very vulnerable and scary for you to tabletop your upper back or – to like let your chest chest face the ground because you'll think that your lower back will hurt, but that's all normal. Like I guess different language. Yeah. Mm. That's been really cool. 
An RDL. What are Lo- they good for? Love an RDL. Everything. Mm. And I think people also have the misconception that your lower back won't feel anything when you're good at them. But I feel like the stronger you get, the more yeah. you will probably mm-hmm. notice your lower back, back plays a role in it. Well, you're going to have obviously really strong erectors if you're really yeah. good at yeah, yeah, they're working. RDL, yeah. It's the same with a squat and the deadlift. You're mm. going to feel your back at some point. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of hard to get around. Like when people and are, it's oh, not a bad thing. That's it. When people are, I'm getting back pump. It's like, well, to me, you're satisfying the rules. You're setting mm. a really nice brace. You're mm-hmm. maintaining tension through your hips. You're moving nicely as you're traveling through space. Like, unfortunately, that's just a byproduct of what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and you'll feel your back even more if mm. you go from a shitty technique, like a fully rounded back to maintaining a rigid torso. Your back's going to be working harder to hold that position. Mm-hmm. So you're going to feel it yeah. more and get mm. more pumped. It's not a bad thing all the time. Yeah. You've created more awareness around it as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like I said, if you can distinguish the difference, I always ask my clients that: is it pain or is it just like you know, a pump? Like, yeah. oh, it's just a pump. I'm like, ah, oh, it's nothing to really worry about. If you can distinguish the difference between the two, then I think you're away laughing, mm. or it's less scary. Mm. Mm-hmm. But it's good for everything. Mm. That's a good exercise. Mm. It's one of my favorites. <sighs> Shout out the Romanians, man. <laughs> mm. Did they actually invent it? Yeah. Unfortunately, the Bulgarian the Bulgarians ruined lifting <laughs> <laughs> forever. Uh, who else ruined lifting? Germans. What did the G- G- oh, GVT? GV- oh, GVT. <laughs> German volume training. What else is there? Well, we better cut it there before it gets too racist. So. <laughs> Uh, well thanks for listening bye 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 thank you so much for listening to the zero podcast if you want more information head to our instagram zero underscore weakness hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions thank you once more